What is up YouTube? I'm back again with another video. So, now that I've uploaded the video about the Connection Army Navy store and about its unfortunately closing, um, it definitely sucks that, uh, I mean, I guess the, the entire country as a whole is kind of starting to lose surplus stores, but most importantly, we're also losing like our mom and pop stores like that, and that's unfortunate to see go. So, really wanted to document how that looked then, but, uh, I mentioned he had stuff mounted on the walls, and you guys might have seen that in the video. For the longest time, none of that stuff was for sale. Either it was stuff from his private collection that he had gotten through a trade, or, uh, just something like that. Um, there was something like he couldn't get any more, and decided to keep his last one and mount it to the wall. So... With him closing, he is selling uh, a lot of that stuff on the wall, um, and I bought some stuff, and I want to show you guys what I bought. So, uh, the first day, um, or just the other day, I bought, I think this was on Wednesday, I bought an M72 Law, that's the uh, lightweight anti-tank weapon that's what the law stands for and this is the early model it has a manufacturing date of February 1965 the US military adopted these things in 1963 so um, just a few years after they adopted them this one was made it's very nice to see its sticker still intact it has some white residue of a previous sticker being on here and all you can make out is just a few words not a whole lot down there it says rank name is what I would assume it would say so I'm gonna take a wild guess and say that this sticker was just to uh, document that it was okay to be sold as surplus and was no longer um, serviceable uh, but I think I'm going to take like a wet rag and try and get that off. Um, but that's what is on there now. And then, of course, you do have a warning label. You got your uh, safe and fire. So this is safe, and you pull it out. You're on fire. Basically, it unlocks a switch in here. Um, you'll notice that it is missing its uh, rubber topper and on this side, too. But that's pretty common with these old uh, style ones. And because it's military, you got everything on the instructions about it. I like how in this picture, the GI, and I'm not sure how well the camera's going to be able to pick up on that at all. Um, that's better. It looks like the GI on this illustration is smirking. Uh, basically, in case if you've ever held one of these things, too, uh, well, you'll be smirking as well. And you have a, uh, another warning label. So basically, oh, and then the nice thing about this early one is that you see it, it comes with its end cap and its, uh, sling. Most of the time, these slings were cut off for demilitarization or when the, the M72 was used itself because these were not reloadable. Um this piece was just thrown away so it's very uncommon to find old ones like this still with this strap and cover but uh so basically you'd remove this and then there'd be a, a safety pin right here that you would pull out that safety pin is missing and then you have this d handle here and you just pull straight back and it extends it and then your um this piece will flip up here and then uh, your sight, your plastic sight, which is encased on the inside, uh, pops up. Unfortunately, this one is broken off, so it's just like the nub just sitting in there. But uh, while it's collapsed like this, it does look very nice. And then I also bought this one just today. So this is... Uh, the M72A2, so there was an M72, that's this one, an M72A1, uh, one in between here, and then um, this one, the M72A1. And as you guys can see, its lot number was scratched off and 
It has a manufacturing date of February 1971. Now it had a uh, different housing on top. It had a, uh, a better uh, sight, a better upgraded uh, safety. So whereas the old one, you could accidentally leave this thing on fire and it will permanent or it will be like that until you press it in. Whereas this one, it's spring loaded to where it's never going to get accidentally left on the uh, fire position. So you, you have to be holding that out uh, while you're pulling the or pressing the uh, igniter. So upgraded safety feature, very important. And then an updated site. And then, of course, you got instructions here. Um, I'll go ahead and open this one for you guys. It does have its uh, safety pin. Of course, its D handle is gone. And its uh, carrying strap and end uh, cap is gone. But that's very common with these. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out so you guys could see it. This is very hard to pull out. I think I might have to spray some WD 40 or something like that in there. Because um, this one was displayed uh, while in the open position. So probably dust in there or something. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and set it down for you guys or set the camera down. Okay guys, so after wrestling with that, here it is in its firing position, or its open position. And you can see you got your rear sight, so basically you just peek through there, and you aim, and you fire it. This one still has its rubber buttons intact, which is very nice to see. And it has its sight still intact, which again is very nice to see. Like with my other one, it is actually missing this piece. It's broken off, so. And that piece just slides in the back and is protected like that, so it doesn't actually fold into the, uh, the barrel itself. And then last but not least, guys, I got this. This is a M17A1. It's dated 1981. The M17A1 ceased production in 1982. So this one has the drinking tube and then it has the resuscitator uh, tube on the inside. Um, has its hood. Very dirty. But uh, this thing has been hanging up. Uh, the owner, Walt, he had estimated that he's had this thing for about 18 years. Um, these ones, uh, he was thinking 20 to 25 years. Um, he said that he knew that he had them uh, before they they transferred to their the spot that they're in now. Um, and basically had been hanging up ever since. But uh, this gas mask, guys, um, was another piece hanging up. And... What makes it significant for me is that um, when I very first started collecting gas masks, it was this gas mask that uh, really brought me up to it. Um, this is the gas mask, the main gas mask used by the U.S. in the Gulf War. And at the time, I couldn't find them anywhere. And this is the only one that I knew was around. Of course, it wasn't for sale, but... Uh, since it is was now I decided to pick it up and um but yeah guys so this like I said this is the exact gas mask that really brought me into the realm of collecting gas masks um so for me to own this thing is is very special of course now that I I uh have two or three of these things but um I have the exact one that really brought me into gas mask collecting and back then they weren't easy to find they weren't anywhere on the internet uh but i managed to dig around and i found some but uh yeah guys that's what makes this gas mask special to me honestly now he was thinking that he had gotten this thing from a private trade or something because he had mentioned a lot of the ones that he would got for the store specifically to sell did not have the hood or anything with them of course you notice that this one has the hood and it has its protective outserts. 
something very interesting to me on this gas mask is that it has on its drinking tube I've never seen an M17 uh, lose its black finish on its drinking tube connector um, so honestly and there's there's a lot of dust on the inside of this thing um, I, I off I, I really do question whether or not this thing was actually used in the Gulf War because there's no reason why there's so much dust on the inside of this gas mask if it's been hanging up that long and it's drinking tube is worn down the finish is that that bad um, I, I would strongly suggest that this thing has probably been used in the Persian Gulf so those are the the things I bought that were wall mounted the, the stuff that was typically never for sale um, honestly guys these M72s not only do I, I I like them for their collector value as a Vietnam collector myself but Whenever I'd walk into this store from 2010 or 11 when I first started going there till now, these are the first two things I always noticed. I mean, they were always so noticeable uh, just up there on the wall. And um, it's, it's very special to say that I get to own them now, uh, along with the gas mask, of course. But yeah, guys, I mean... Me and my grandma, we used to have this route that we would do to where I'd get home from school. This is probably when I was back in middle school. And we, I'd get home from school. We would go down to the Army Surplus store, spend about an hour there. Then we would go to KFC, eat, and then we'd go back into town, or out of town, I guess, closer to where I live. And there was a, a, another mom-and-pop store called Motive Parts, and they also sold surplus stuff. And I would go there and... Uh, um, of course, they're no longer around either, but uh, they had good surplus stores. So that was that was my route. Uh, you know, I went there a lot, and we enjoyed it. I mean, still do, but yeah, it's great to have those memories. So, anyways, guys, that is it for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, these guys will have their own reviews, and uh, see you guys on the next one.